So hello guys, in this video we'll be talking about memory allocation or the malloc function. So the malloc function is used to allocate a certain amount of memory during the execution of a program. It will request a block of memory from the heap and if the request is granted, the operating system will reserve the presented amount of memory and malloc will return a pointer to the reserved space. Now, you also need to note that when the amount of memory is not needed anymore, you must return it to the operating system by calling the function free. malloc is used to reserve a block of memory of a specified size, and dynamic memory allocation allows us to allocate memory dynamically after we have run the program. But in memory allocation, you have the automatic memory allocation and the dynamic memory allocation. In the automatic memory allocation, this is what we do when we declare variables or when we use strings within double quotes. So the program take care of or the program takes care of, take care of take care of the memory allocation for us. So we don't even need to think about anything. The program reserves the space itself and uses it without you doing anything. By default, the memory used to store variables that we create can be read and be written. And when the program leaves the function, the memory used for all of the above is released for future use. In simple terms, automatic memory allocation is done automatically. You don't need to do anything. The program is going to create it, create the memory for you, and it's going to free it when it is done. Now, in dynamic memory allocation, which is malloc, this is the one you have control over. Yeah, the program does not know in advance how much memory that we may need, and we will only know when the program is being run or after compilation. So the malloc function allocates a specific number of bytes in memory and returns a pointer to the allocated memory. This memory will have read and write permissions. Now, after you've allocated memory, you should also destroy or free the memory that you've allocated. And you do that using the free function. So the memory that is allocated with malloc is not automatically released when the function returns. You have to deallocate every memory space you previously allocated to yourself. If you do not do this, then your program can run out of memory. Your operating system could even kill your program while it is running. So let's code it. Let's see this in code. So doing this in code, I'm going to use um, Visual Studio Code to do this. So the very first thing is, let's include our header. Include stdio.h. Then let's create our main function, int main. Let's declare a simple variable. So I'll call this int x. Okay, then next, remember, it has to be a pointer. So I'm going to create a pointer called PTR. Now, for you to declare a memory allocation, for you to set a, a, a memory allocation or to ask for the computer to or the system to give you an allocated memory, you use the following function. So after creating the pointer, then you type int it. So we type int it to an integer. So it becomes an integer because you cannot type, you cannot uh, use a memory allocation on a void variable. You can use it on void, but if you want to use the return value of the result of the function, then you have to use it as an integer or a character. So malloc n times the size of so it's going to check the size of the integer, then multiply it by the number of memory that you want. So let's assume x is equal to 100. And remember that an integer normally has a size of 4. So if this integer has a size of 4, size of int is 4, and n is equal to 100, it means that we'll be allocated a memory of 400. Understand? So let's proceed.
So we can collect input values, okay, from the user so that we can um, get properly what we want to, the values we want to set, we want to impute inside of this memory that has been allocated for us. So let's say because X is um, actually 100 is much, so let's say four. Let's say we want four integers, okay? Then we can proceed and use a for loop to say for int, int i is equal to zero when i is less than n. So if i is less than four, then i plus plus. So we want to collect the input from the user. So we use scan f. Scan f percentage d. Then pt arrow plus one. So because it comes, it, it, it's when you use when you use the pointer for sets of values, it actually acts like an array. So the very first value of the pointer is going to be the memory address. Then you can then assess the further values inside of the array. Okay. So that's that. So we can put a print f just above here just to prompt the user. So we say print f. We say enter values, then new line. Okay, so what's, let's also find a way to um, bring out the values that the users have printed out for us. So we say print f, and we say something like values you entered, then new line. So we can do another for loop here for, let's call this J. Let's call this I because it's still the same. So int I is equal to zero. I is less than N. I plus plus. Then print F. So we are printing the value that the user entered. Percentage, sorry. Percentage D, everything should be on new line. And what are we getting? We have to dereference the pointer now. So we are dereferencing it to get the value. So P, PT arrow plus I. So there we have it. Let's also do that here. We have some errors, so let's clear it. Then also have this on new line. Okay. On new line. But before you proceed, it is important that you check because sometimes your memory may not be allocated. So let's do an if statement that says if PT arrow is equal to null, then it should stop the program by telling us that it should tell us that something like memory could not be allocated. So it's important you do this because sometimes the memory may not be allocated, then we can return zero so that the program ends here. But if the program does not end here, that is, if the memory was allocated successfully, then it should proceed down here. All right. So also, Let's use this int i outside instead of putting it inside of our for loop. So we have something like this. So i is equal to zero. All right. So let's check our code to ensure that everything is working properly. So pt arrow is equal to int. malloc. Oh, sorry. It's an x instead of we are using x. By using x less than x, and we're using x here too. 
okay so we use int x so malloc x good print f enter values so let's run this but i'm seeing some errors already yeah so let's fix this expected semicolon and where is this error coming from sorry guys okay so I've been able to fix the error so the first issue I had was uh, I was using print instead of print f right here which was wrong so that has been rectified now so now that it has been rectified let me walk us through the code again so the int main so I started by declaring a um, I declared a variable x int x and I assigned it to 4 then I also declared a pointer <clears throat> then I proceeded to introduce the malloc function so malloc of x okay x is 4 then of integer so we want to assign memory of an integer that can take in four variables okay four then we check that the pointer is not empty so when the pointer is not empty then we start to assign the value so we enter the first value using the scan f then we use the print f to print out the value entered by the user then one last thing is we have to free the memory okay so free pt arrow so that we remove everything that was stored inside of pt arrow so now that pt arrow has been free so we've done malloc and we've also used the free the next thing for us is to run this program so if i click on run and it's telling me now to enter the values let me pull this upward so enter values i'm going to enter 23 4 78 And as you can see, values you entered. So it has read out the four values for us. It didn't take in the fifth one. And after showing us the value, it has also gone ahead to free the memory here, free PT arrow. So guys, that is it on malloc and free. Malloc, which means dynamic memory allocation, and free, which you use to free anything or any memory that you've allocated previously. So guys, see you in the next one. Thank you.